Hello and welcome to this video on a very current topic, the China and US trade relations. Um, you just hear a lot in the media at the moment, just here like on the front page of Bloomberg or wherever you go, CNBC, Yahoo Finance. Um, now I figured um, best is to actually look at the, at the data. Um, how much does, um, how much do the US and China actually trade? And of course the question is, who uh, would be hurt most um, if the if if trade um, decreases between those two countries? Um, so we have from the United Nations the UN Comtrade database, where you can extract um, raw data of imports export statistics for every country with every country in the world. Um, and we're using R. I don't want to focus too much on the code here, um, but if you're interested, I have a, a GitHub, GitHub repository, economic related, where I put the code, as well as I have a post on my new website, um, where you can find exactly what we're doing, uh, including the code, so you can replicate um, what I'm showing in the following. Let's load the the data that I've already prepared and of course the international trade what interests us most is the balance of trade in goods and maybe in services uh, in goods the question is how much more does the US import um, over its exports so let's see first over time uh, you see here the exports and the imports and by 2018, it's the last data point, you have more than 2.5 trillion, that's 2,500 billion uh, in US dollar value export uh, imported. The exports uh, make up uh, more than 1.6 trillion uh, in US dollar value. Uh, so you see the growth, it's, it's an incredible growth that has uh, come up uh, just over the over the last 20 years. Uh, now, of course, there's more to it. There's services um, that we're going to neglect um, for the moment. So this uh, almost one trillion in deficit is uh, less if you also consider uh, services because uh, the U.S. have a net export and of services. Let's go back to the website because I already printed it here. Service. So yeah, the, the, in services they have a, a surplus of 230 billion in US dollar because the exported services is higher than the imported services. Uh, but this shouldn't interest us too much at the moment. What interests us much more is the who are the trading partners. For it to render here, you see. And uh, the U.S. imports and exports um, over 24 of its major trading partners. You see in trading value, so it's ordered by trading values, uh, the sum of imports and exports. Um, you see Canada, Mexico and China ranking in the top three, then Japan, uh, Deutschland, Germany, uh, Great Britain, UK, uh, Korea and so forth. So you see that uh, China, <laughs> what you're looking at, is with 563 billion US dollars of imports in 2018. So Chinese imports made up almost 22% of US imports in 2018, which is a huge, huge amount. Um, put this um, besides Mexico, which still made up 13.6% um, and 350 billion. Uh, Canada um, to, uh, almost 13% and then there's the, the smaller ones like Japan, Germany, uh, UK, Korea, France, Brazil, Italy, Netherlands, Singapore, Malaysia and so forth. What is even more striking is the, is the difference, uh, the, the unbalancedness um, between imports and exports for China. So you see Mexico and China still they have a a deficit against uh, Mexico but there's a lot more exports as well uh, Mexicans buying 
uh, U.S. goods, cars, and so forth. Uh, while in China, the, the imports, uh, so from the point of view of, of China, uh, imports from the U.S. only make up 120 uh, billion. This is for the major um, trading partners. And now let's see um, the current five trading partners that we saw um, Canada, China, Germany, um, imports to the US. And um, you see that all of them had a growth, of course, but you see one uh, going up uh, incredibly is China. China that started out as the, as the lowest of, the, of these five current top five. Um, and you see here the blue is Japan. Japan is at the same, almost at the same level as, as in 92, while as China just is, a, is overflying everyone else. Not so high, and who is Mexico? Oh, Mexico is also increasing a lot. Started off from a low value, and now it's the second largest import uh, trading partner from the US. And also in a share of, of total imports, you see, that yes, previously it was actually Canada and Japan also in 92. Japan was very strong and they all, at the time in 92 they made up yeah over at one point over 20 percent of all Chinese imports while as today 2018 2019 that's China. China's making up 22 percent of all imports. We see already that China has a has a huge importance on the U.S. Um, economy uh, running smoothly because the U.S. depends on the imports. But now let's reverse and, uh, the point of view and look at the data from China because China is also reporting um, to UN Comtrade. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have data from 2018 yet. We only have 2017. And we also see that China, of course, it has a surplus in uh, balance of trade in goods, uh, contrary to the US, um, exporting 2.2 trillion in the US dollar, and while importing 1.6, almost 1.7 uh, trillion. But, um, the top 24 trading partners, US, um, making up 19.4% of all exports, 19.4% of all exports from China go to the US. Uh, then the, the following, we have Hong Kong, uh, which also makes up uh, still 12.6%. Uh, Japan, Korea, and Germany, and of course, <laughs> the US making up 19.4% of all exports has a huge importance on China. China doesn't want to lose it by any means. Um, so let's see also the, let's also have a look at the development over time. And looking over time, we see, so I, I draw it in here, the, in 2007, the U, um, China, Chinese exports in red for the first time overtook the exports from the US. And of course, this has a lot to do with the with the GDP uh, or the growth uh, in China. Uh, when you look at so again, I draw it in here. You see, in 1976 was only the end of the Mao area era, uh, the end of the Cultural Revolution in China. And you see that they had no economic power whatsoever. And only in like, say starting 92, you see a barely like upwards trends starting uh, and only in 2008 you see the 2008 Beijing um, Olympics and since then it more than doubled again so there's a huge exponential growth uh, you see only in 2012 end of 2012 and um, Xi Jinping the current um, par um, Communist Party leader president say, of China came to power and again, it increased. We have a whopping 12, yeah, 12.2 12, 12 trillion uh, US dollar uh, GDP 
currently. Uh, with the, of course, the U.S. still leading with 19.5 trillion. But it's just a matter of time until the Chinese will overtake um, the USA. Finally, there's one more thing that I want to see, and that's what goods. Because the UN contract uh, database also allows you to look for several commodities. Uh, it's a bit of a struggle to download all of the stuff, but you can say you want to look for live animals, or even more specific, you want to see beef or tomatoes or whatever. You can find these uh, these commodities and see the, exp uh, the exact amount it traded. And so in this plot that is going to show up um, is the reported by the US and the trading partner Chinese China for the year 2018 um, the goods traded by category and you see the imports uh, mostly it's electronics, machinery, equipment so all the tech, computers, so forth um, that's what what the Chinese are delivering to the US was 156 tr um, billion in value. Then you see nuclear reactors, machine. I think it, that that title is longer. It's also mostly machinery and industrial plants and so forth. You also see furniture, toys and games, and a lot of others. And um, while well, the US to China, of course, the total amount is a lot smaller. But as we saw with uh, with Google, Huawei, um, that it has a, a lot. The U.S. has a lot of power um, with certain or technical parts of the products that Chinese that China is producing. Um, but at the end, of course, both depend on one another. Um, always also keep in mind that uh, economy is not only about producing. So consumers at the end are paying the price. Um, iPhones, all cool electronics will be more expensive in the US. Um, so the question is, is it worth it? At the end, I believe it's more of a, of a geopolitical um, debate that is going to um, follow. And so yeah, that's my point of view. If you like this video, um, have a look at the code. And uh, thanks for watching and goodbye.